let's start off with a big wave. Welcome everyone who's live here on Halloween. Anyone who's watching uh, in the group, welcome aboard. Anyone's watching the recordings, welcome aboard. This is almost part number two, isn't it, Heather? So part number two, uh, because last week we discussed everything mindset. We discussed everything in terms of, you know, just necessarily healing money wounds, money patterns, any traumas that come up around money, all those different things, because we know everything's energy. We know everything that we like to manifest needs to be energetically aligned. And so last week's call was mainly around that, mainly around how we think about money, how we relate to money, our relationship with money. Um, and I thought, let's continue the let's continue the theme and give you all more of the practicality side of things because a lot of you will have questions around, okay, now I know I want to align with money. I'm feeling good about it. I'm starting to you know, manifest something new, but now what do I do, <laughs> right? What do I do? And uh, that's why we have Heather back. So we're going to give Heather a big wave and a big, a big, give her a big thank you for giving us her, her time because this is her expertise. And so she's going to be, I guess, labeling out things for us regarding investing, wealth creation, how to do it, um, what she recommends. And then you all can ask your questions. We can brainstorm either your unique situations or whether it's, um, you know, just, just your own personal experience and how you might be able to execute on these strategies. Sound good? Cool. Let's all take a deep breath. Beautiful. Heather, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm great, actually. Thank you for having me. Amazing. It's exciting to do round two. Yes, we're all excited. Um, where do you think we should get started? When someone jumps on board with you in a program, on a call, whatever it may be, and you're starting to take more of the action steps towards you know, wealth creation, it might be, it might be saving, it might be how do you start accumulating the wealth to then invest so it grows over time. What what are the practical steps that you'd like to start with? Okay. So I think probably the best thing I could do to start with is just to have a little disclaimer in that none of what I say is actual advice. So I have to do that legally. Um and then so okay, so let's rewind. So if you haven't seen the call last week, I recommend that you do, because that is the kind of first step, the first stage that we go through when we do our whole Foundations of Financial Freedom program. So we go through all the mindset stuff, we heal all the wounds, and we get all the foundations in place in which to kind of almost get a blank slate in which to then build. Because if you've got all the wounds, if you've got all the limiting beliefs, then we'll just end up pushing it away again. So the first step is to get into a good state, a good frame in order to welcome in abundance. And then we, at that stage, get into the more practical side of things. And the first step that we go through is we really need to get clarity. We need, really need to get clarity on where you are right now and I think it's interesting because I find that a lot of people you know they, they're in business they're doing all these things they might be investing a lot but it's very rare that I find people that have a real button on you know just their own numbers what their actual income actually is each month what their actual outgoings are each month and just really getting that clear picture of where they are, you know, and then getting bigger in that in terms of what their overall kind of net worth is in terms of their assets and their liabilities. And really, the way I look at it is it's important to view your life, your personal life, like a business, because if you take a big corporation, they're not going to sort of wing it and just think, oh, yeah, we're sort of OK. We're sort of doing this. We're sort of doing that. You know, they are on the numbers. They absolutely know where they are at any given time. And so it's important, you know, even if it's not all the time to at least take steps along the way to get that clarity, get that understanding, because I find you know, with my data analytics background, it's just so much easier 
when you have everything in one place, when you've got a spreadsheet and it's all there, right in front of you, all of a sudden, the next steps become very clear. It just jumps out at you and it's just really, really insightful and amazing. And suddenly, even in the worst pictures that you see, even they, it's like, yeah, okay, I can see you need to do this, this and this and this. And suddenly the pathway becomes clear. So that will be in my first step that I would take when we're starting to get practical. Awesome. It makes sense, doesn't everyone? If you want to, if you're moving forward with your financial situation, it often, you know, you often need to really look and feel, okay, where am I at? Let's gain clarity around where I'm at. And if I think it's good if you have spreadsheets or, you know, some sort of document where you, you can have that snapshot of this is where I'm at. And I think what's really important about that is you can start working on any type of the shame and blame around where you're at right now. Um, I know we talked about that. Like you said, Heather, last week we talked mostly around all of those different patterns, but um, that snapshot, just being able to look at it, you know, and, and being able to look at it from a place that's um, objective and a place of just holding space and peace gives you not only the, um, the, the courage to face if you don't like what you're seeing, but also to just have a gauge, right? Have a, have a look at the dashboard and start to see, okay, these, these, are the, these are the figures. And now that I have the courage to look at it, now I have the, the clarity of where I want to go and where I am right now. It gives you, gives you some, I guess, more of a resourceful energy to move forward with, right? Um, what do you suggest, Heather, when it comes to gaining clarity? What do people need to know? Do they need to know what's in their bank account? What, what action steps moving forward? What their goals are? Like, what do you wrap in this, this blanket of clarity? Yeah, so it's like the first thing you need to do is your profit and loss. So you need to understand, you know, what exactly are the income, what exactly are the outgoings, you know, you know, that alone just gives you so much kind of just, you know, just to hold on things because, you know, income, you know, we need to know and we need to have it all on one sheet. Outgoings, there's lots of leaky buckets, shall we say things subscriptions and things that you know we've got we've we, we we kind of we we register as all good intent and then we don't use you know you go to, you think you're going to go to the gym and then that sort of falls off the the wayside you think you're going to subscribe to netflix and you may not watch it so much or magazines or you know there's just so many different things that we could find that we do get we've got just into because they make it convenient it's so convenient they'll just take it out it's so nice of them just to take it out each month you haven't got to worry you haven't got to bother but of course that is very dangerous as well because it's you know you, you lose tabs on what is actually happening so that's the that's one side of things and then you've got your bigger picture which is you know what is it that your whole net worth is you know what do you own what assets do you have? You know, these need to be listed out as well. And then the value will change over time. So that's good to know. And then what do you owe? Because one minus the other equals your net worth. So just having those numbers, just having it in mind, because then it's much easier to then set goals because you know where you're starting from. And sometimes I find that when you set these goals, that they're not, it's more attainable than you think. You know, it may not be that you need to get such lofty ideas that you might need it might be less than you think but if but you have to know where you are first before you can kind of then leverage up to to where you want to be totally i think like if any of you called me up weird example but if any of you called me up and say hey i'm in this city um i need to get to the library how do i get there what's going to be my first question where are you where are you in the, where are you in the city right so this gives a good gauge on hey if i want to get somewhere what's first what's the first thing we need to know where where i am you know where where i am provides the path of how to get there but once i know these things can often be um you know can be bypassed because people are like oh i just need to make more money and then they're just focusing on trying to trying to make more money trying to get the next client trying to do all these things to make sure they're okay for this month, um, but there's actually a lot of a lot of benefit. I know I do this quite a lot. It's just looking at your bank statements, looking at the um, 
profit and loss from your either your personal account or your business account and just seeing where's your money going what's coming in what's what's going and every time i sort of look through that i'll start to tick off different things i'm like i don't need that anymore right i'm paying for this and i i don't use that or you know i can leverage my time and do this instead and you know you start finding creative ways to cut back just because of you know it's not from a scarcity point of view but it's from a just being smart point of view of just being aware so does anyone have any questions there for heather with just getting a snapshot of where you're at and tracking your tracking your numbers and seeing um your profit and loss or where things are going assets liabilities diana go for it a practical question is do you have a template that is like here put your stuff in because i've tried to create them and i know that there's fancy ways to put this number here and add it to there and at the end of the month bam there you have it so that's my question True. yeah yeah absolutely yeah i do have a template and it's you know it's it's good to categorize things as well to be able to you know really kind of no, you know, because obviously you don't want to have a look at it in total detail, you know, what well, you do want to look at it in detail, but you want to categorize it to be able to make sense of it. So, yeah, so I do. Yeah. So it's something I could share if, if that's of interest to anyone. Yes. Wendy, Wendy wants it as well. Yeah. Anyone else, anyone else want a template? I think that'd be helpful. Can I just share that um, Excel spreadsheets and I, we, we, it's a mystery, I'll be honest. I mean, I can, I can put in, the, the, the yes and the no sort of things. But when you get some, some of the people do some complicated things with formulas and I go, how does it work? Somebody <laughs> set one up for me. It needs to be adjusted, but I have no idea what she did in the first place. So I, I'm looking at this and going, mm, I need help. So Heather, can we talk? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I do love a bit of Excel myself, but it's, you know, it's not as hard as you think. I think just someone just sitting down with you and just going, just press that and press that. And it is super duper. I love it. Beautiful. Maybe we can organize ways. I'm not sure, Heather. Maybe we'll get on chat and organize a, a way people can uh, get access to a template. I think that would be really, that would be helpful um, so everyone knows. But I think the, the understanding here is, hey, let's get a snapshot of what's coming in, what's going out, and how we can be more smart, what aligns with our goals, what aligns with our lifestyle, you know, what's important right now. Um, and so, Heather, is the is the step in that to sort of see where you can um, where you can be a bit more smart with with saving each month, so that you have a certain amount that you can use towards investing? Is that the next step? Yes, of course. Yeah. So the idea, I mean, obviously, just being efficient is good in its own right, but with my model, it really talks about how you know, rather than just spending everything and then it's all gone, if you can take some of that income and then turn it into assets, then all of a sudden you're working smarter because those assets are actually paying you. So suddenly you're getting more income and then that, from that income, you can buy more assets that are then paying you more. So it's this virtuous cycle that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So rather than it just all going out the door and you have you don't see it again, suddenly, you're buying things that are actually going to get bigger. They're going to actually increase your wealth, which means that you either just get wealthier or, you know, you don't have to work so hard. You know, you just have that headspace to be able to do your creative thing, do that thing that, you know, you're really meant to do without it being like stressful. And in that fight or flight, you can't really be creative. Mm, totally. Anyone, everyone understand the concept of compound compounding interest? Everyone understand that concept? Um, it's it's. I think did Einstein label that as the eighth wonder of the world or something, something he, like that. I, I, they say it's disputed, but anyway, let's just say he said it because okay, it's, we'll all say that he said it because we're all <laughs> we all understand Einstein. Um, but yeah, compounding interest is when you know things compound over time and they compound on themselves so that there's an exponential growth, right? A, a way to sort of recap this i've been doing money exercises i've been learning about investing saving doing all these different things um, with joel solomon as well and the exercise i had was he said you write a check i'm not sure if you guys have played this check game but you write an imaginary check every month uh, every day sorry an imaginary check every day that you need to spend and it's an exercise 
um, for you to start spending ways in, in ways that are abundant by just playing the game. So every at day one, you start with a thousand. And you can either each day go and spend a thousand, and the next day, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, and and amplify every day by a thousand. And it gives you a good uh, a game for a few minutes every day to say, what would I spend this on? Right. Um, and it gets you in a just completely shifts your relationship with money. But what I did was I doubled it every day. And I did it for 21 days because that's how long it takes to create a habit, some might say. And so for 21 days, I started with a thousand, then went two thousand, then four, then eight, then sixteen. Right? Most would say that compounds, correct? If it's doubling every day, just as this exercise. So after 21 days, how many do you, how much money do you think I was spending? When do you guess is a lot? A million bucks. The answer is one billion. One billion. Crazy, hey? I, like I don't, I'm there playing the game. Like, what am I doing with spending a billion dollars? But anyway, this that's an exercise that I was doing as a way to just uh, shift my relationship with money in a way that's fun, thinks abundantly in ways that like completely changes the way I normally think about money. So feel free to do that if you think that'll be fun, but that's compounding interest. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's things compounding on themselves. Like what Heather's suggesting, you take your income, you, you know, you use a, a portion of that, a percentage of that towards assets that build and grow that you can also use to attain more assets. Do you want to find that fun? Heather, I've got a question for you. What's your mindset towards this? When you think about growing your assets, what's exciting to you? What do you feel about it? What's your overall focus? What, what do you think your overall relationship is with building those sort of assets? Um, for me, it's quite thrilling, you know, especially because of the things that I'm investing in. It's like, it's just exciting because it's the future. I do a lot of investing in tech. So I kind of think about the future and all the things that are going to be in the world. So I don't know. It's just like it just opens you up rather than it, I think most people just think about finances and they just think, oh, and it just closes them down. And they just, you know, they just rather put pins in their eyes and it just feels like everything's in the too hard basket. But I think if you just change that and just think about the possibilities, even if you don't can't get to where I am, just like how exciting, at least if you can be open to the idea that it could be fun. But I think it just, there's a little chink there that makes you kind of just want to do it a bit more, you know, and a bit and and want to learn about doing it yourself because I think it's easy to sort of give it to somebody else to do. Mm. But as, as people say, it's, you know, no one cares about your money more than you do. So it's important to at least have a bit of knowledge there that you can know how to do it or at least know what good looks like so you can evaluate whether what they're doing with it is is a good thing. Beautiful. Hey, let's 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 check in with the room. What's one emotion that comes up for you? What's the main emotion that comes up for you when you're thinking about growing and attaining assets? What's something that comes up for you? What's an emotion? Is it overwhelming? Is it exciting? Is it fearful? Is it, you know, pretty clear what what are the what's the emotion that comes up for you? This is going to be this is going to be important. Wendy, you want to add something here? I'll share. Um, anxiety. Okay, I beautiful. I got scammed out of an awful lot of money, and so investing in the future is just going to <laughs> yeah. Totally Unfortunately, yeah. I do see a lot of people who have been scammed. It's it's yeah, it's quite rife. Unfortunately, this is important to know. Thanks for sharing, Wendy. Um, this is important to know. It's like, where are we at with our finances, but also where are we at with our relationship to our finances, as we talked last week. So as we shift towards building our assets and, and really investing, um, having a real clear mind and having a real clear focus and having a healthy emotional relationship with it is going to be the most important. Because what I've been learning is if you're fearful, if you're either if you're fearful or scared, you're gonna sell when you need it when you need to buy, and you're gonna buy when you need to sell. And things like these relationships really matter. Um, so once again, everyone, if you want to go back to last week, it's on the podcast, the Awaken Your Business podcast. It's on the YouTube channel. 
it's um everything's up there for everyone to watch and to and to enjoy so feel free to go back to that um so i've got some answers here people typing in the chat confusion okay responsibility i assume that's just like a overwhelming of responsibility just something more you know just something that's another responsibility on the plate excited we got excited as well excited all right beautiful cautious optimism i like it all right heather next question next step okay. where do you think we go from here okay so the next thing is we kind of laser in on just ways of saving so we do it joyfully it's all kind of very positive but just having that kind of idea that the if you if you are making a saving that's a really good thing because then you can put it towards that investment you can put it towards that asset so it's like a really positive thing and so a practical step there would just be to again it's a, about clarity it's about being mindful of actually looking at what you are actually spending so even if you just for a few days a week just to log down what you're spending you know just to get that clarity of what is it you know because so many people work on autopilot they're just going around the supermarket they're just buying the same things over and over they're getting all the same things and so they're not necessarily conscious of what they're actually doing but if you have to log it in a notebook or on your phone and it just it puts a bit of a gap between you and that purchase and so you can actually just have that moment where actually you think do I actually really want this because it just gives you that a moment of pause and then you have to actually commit to it because then if you have to write it down, it's more of a commitment. And so you can actually save quite a lot of money just by doing that. But at least you can get a lot of clarity and then you can kind of go over that and think, did I really need to buy all those things? And so, again, it's just a little way of giving yourself that clarity and and detail on what it is that is actually going out. Awesome. Beautiful. So if we're more mindful with our spending, I'm pretty sure any anyone here, well, show of hands, do you, who knows that if they went over their bank, their bank balance or their 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 transactions, that they could pick some things that they know they don't really necessarily need. Show of hands. No one. No one. How else can we save, Heather? How else can we save? How else? Um, well, I like to play a little game, you know, just in terms of going into a shop and kind of going, OK, how much have I saved? So if you were looking at something and then you kind of decided, actually, no, I'm not going to I'm not going to buy this, actually, then that's a little win. That's a little win of the game. So you can kind of log that down. And it's like just having it, like bringing some fun into it. Mm. bring some play into it which is always much more fun than something like oh no I can't have this which is kind of grim if you actually make it into a game then suddenly you get the power back and then it's like because ultimately it's it is a win for you so if you just see it that way then it just is much more powerful so you can kind of log that down and see if you can beat yesterday's score and things like that so <laughs> suddenly it just turns things around somewhat yeah I even I fasted yesterday so I fasted um, and I, I didn't eat until dinner. And I was thinking, what are those, what are those meals worth? And like, you know, how, it's better for my health, obviously, um, to do, you know, to fast more often. But also I'm like, what am I saving by not eating those meals? And, and how can I use that in ways that are towards my future? You know, things like that get you excited about these little, these little things. Once again, it's not from an energy of scarcity of I can't have or, anything like that but it's an energy of um what can i create here what's possible what how can i design my life in ways that are fun, more fun more healthy you know that are, give me more energy and also more wealth you know it's really it's interesting it's really interesting deanna do you have a question a comment cool. um living out of the refrigerator or the freezer or the cupboards there is hundreds and hundreds of dollars just sitting there. So I've basically been, not to say that I don't go to the grocery store, but I, I go once a week and I just get my fresh stuff. 
And I've been just like, because it's going to get frostbit and then that's wasted money. That's money down the toilet. So I challenge you all and not to throw crap away, like put a soup bucket in your freezer. And when you have the leftovers, you put it in there and then you put the broth, you, then you have soup. There's so many things, make ways, people waste money through food. The end of the week, I open the veggie drawer, things that are a little past their best, soup in the freezer. Sometimes the label comes off and I pick it out and go, I wonder what you are. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> we can always be creative, right? If, if like, I, I like to think you're not being creative enough if you can't really find resourceful ways to to live your life in that way um beautiful so let's say we've gone through certain things we're making more conscious spending habits conscious saving habits we're doing things that are toward that are that are you know put this at the fr at front of our mind um or top of mind i should say let's say you've got you know twenty dollars a hundred dollars two hundred two thousand at the end of the month that that's extra um, that you'd like to put towards your investments. Um, what's next, Heather? Any other questions? Anything that we can practically practically do with that uh, that surplus to make sure we're doing it in a in a healthy way? So I guess the next step is well, apart from setting goals, which I've already talked about, I guess then we're talking getting more into the nitty gritty of actually how to invest. So. I like to do it strategically. So I don't, you know, so I don't put all my eggs in one basket. So I don't, you know, if you take the sort of gambling analogy, I don't put everything on red. You know, I'm very much about diversification and being able to, my always my barometer is to help people to sleep well at night. So if you've gone too far into one thing, then that's a big no-no for me. And so it's, you know, because if you can't sleep well at night, you're just so worried that, you know, you've put the house on something, then that's obviously not a good idea. So um, just building that strategic portfolio, being able to, I just like thinking of just having your finger in lots of different pies, you know, and, and, and there's just lots and lots of different ways. I think that one thing to sort of start with is the fact that the media likes to say that it's just everything's doom and gloom. It's all, you know, inflation and you know and recessions and you know wars and things and I think that one has the impression that there's just nothing that can be done and it's just it's all kind of downhill but actually that's not the, the case at all there's just so many opportunities and I think that it's actually quite exciting and there's just lots of possibilities and so yeah, no, I I just, I mean, I guess I got into, I mean, one of the things that I just love is tech and I got into tech probably maybe 10, 15 years ago, but it's, it's you know, that there's a lot of possibilities in all of the different technology it's available, whether you invest in it or you use tech to invest, it's like whichever way around you do it. But there are just lots of platforms, there's lots of ways that you can look and, and investigate, and there's just lots of things that you can do in and around the technology that's available to us. I mean, here we all are on on a computer we're all on zoom we're all you know in a room a virtual room together having this conversation I mean that's just unheard of what 20 years ago we wouldn't have even believed that this is possible in real time so here we are so you know what's what's next what what could we be doing in the future I think having that vision of the future and being able to you know just get some thoughts as to what that might be because Golly, you know, there are companies, there are companies that are going to make that reality happen. So, you know, which companies are doing that, you know, you can invest in not only the companies, but in the sectors. So you can kind of just hold on to their coattails, they're doing all the hard work, they're making it all happen, but we can actually benefit from all of that knowledge and all of that hard work, we can actually benefit too by supporting them, because when we when we invest in them, we are effectively supporting their work. So we are contributing too in our own way, but it's it, it helps them and it helps us. It's kind of a it's a it's a lovely thing actually. It's 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 not you know I think that it tend you know it can be seen as very sort of 
selfish and you know all the negative connotations one might think about money but actually on on a positive light it's actually very supportive and and it's you know it's it's a win-win I guess uh, real feeling that it's like where the energy which you're coming from when you're investing and seeing what seems like Heather you see things from what's possible like a, an energy of possibility of things that you believe in things that you want to invest in win wins for everyone and having that looking for those opportunities to really to really expand in that way i think that's super important um i think just being able to choose what you want to invest in by what do you believe in right the things that you really believe in no doubt we all invest in our business right whether it's finances, whether it's time, energy, we invest in our business. We believe in it. We believe it will grow, and um, you know, and, and hopefully build over time. Where at the end of the uh, at the end of the line, you're starting to you've you've built something for yourself that's sustainable, and um, you know, by supporting in other other projects, other things that you really believe in, um, provides that it's just like an energy of doing what's good in the world and. Um, putting it out there rather than, you know, oh, I need to invest in this thing because, you know, I won't be okay if I don't, you know, completely different energy. Um, I would also say, Heather, I know, obviously we know not to invest from a place of a place of fear, but would you also recommend that we don't also invest from a place of greed? Because that's one of the emotional um, elements that I was always told is be mindful of where you're like of obviously where you fear and obviously what you, where you're greedy, where, you know, of these different things. So what can you speak to about that? Am I wrong in thinking that my brain is, you know, my brain can be, can go down certain paths of attaching to an, a, a particular outcome because of an overdeveloped excitement and it can lead me to not make something, a decision that's rational or do you, like to embrace that what's what's your perspective I don't know I I look at wealth in terms of well-being you know it, it I, I don't think for, for me personally and in, in my business I don't think greed comes into it it's not about that it's about having a well life it's about having an abundant life and it's about all the things that you can do with that so it's not about greed because if you're a good person and you've got moralistic um, intentions and you've got good intentions and you can put that money to very good use you know the businesses that we do tend to be to, you know especially in this circle tend to be very caring and and considerate businesses that really help people or we can choose to you know help causes that we want to help and things like that so I don't think wanting to have abundance is greedy you know it's not really it's not really a case of that I mean it, you know everybody's different and of course some people will be coming from that place but you don't have to come from that place and it and, and I think more to the point it's probably more about the feelings of guilt rather than anything you might be mm. giving yourself grief that you're wanting it and interpreting that as greed whereas in fact it's not that at all yeah one thing I've been working on is also giving more I right? just just simply giving more because the, the flow of energy of giving and receiving is a very powerful thing. And for, for us to live in abundance, we need to act in accordance to that, don't we? Our actions need to reflect that. And so it's not necessarily greedy if it's coming from a place of, um, I'm doing this not only for me, but for those I care about, for, the, for, for spreading consciousness, for spreading love, spreading um, kindness. And so if you're generating wealth and building something sustainable and, and enjoying the process and also giving more, then uh, I think you're doing a pretty powerful thing. So when it comes to, yes, we're very clear. We're being very conscious. We're also moving forward with developing, uh, you know, more savings. And we're thinking about investing those, investing those savings to build our assets. Do you have any particular questions of what someone should be Investing, if it's real estate, paper assets, crypto, you know, certain other more specific stocks, what, what do you think um, are the questions there for people to start working out for themselves? 
Well, I tend to approach it in terms of kind of layers, trying to build a sort of a foundation of more sort of stable investments. And then as people's confidence grows, then I kind of help people to upgrade into more specific things and specific shares. So I tend to start with people investing in baskets of things. You can invest in in indices, which means you can have the average of the growth of things like the whole of the Australian stock market, for example, you could invest in. So you could just have that whole growth. So you're not investing in just one one share, which is inherently risky. You can kind of spread the risk amongst a whole bunch of different other shares. Not only that, but you can also, as I said, invest in sectors. So if you like AI, you can invest in the whole of AI, or if you like, you know, anything, there's so many different categories, drone technology, for example, you know, literally anything you can think of, you can just invest in a whole basket of companies that fall into that category. So again, it spreads the risk, obviously spread, it obviously diminishes the returns, theoretically, because if if one there's a couple of really big stars in there, it's kind of being pulled down by the others because it's an average. But if the whole sector is growing, then you still benefit from that, which is really nice. So that's something that's definitely worth starting off with. Um, and there's just a whole bunch of other stuff. I mean, I, I'm as I said, I, you can see that I do tend to like sort of the tech stuff, but obviously there's crypto, which is a whole nother opportunity. And what I like about it most of all is that it's something else to invest in, another way to diversify, as well as being an insurance policy for the future, because you just don't know what what the future is going to bring, and it just it's just something which inherently feels that it's the right thing because it's you know, a native to digital currency for a digital world. So it kind of makes sense from that perspective. But it's also all of the other things as well. It's got quite a lot of different benefits as well and acts as different things like it can act as a digital form of gold as well, which is really nice. Um, so, yeah, just having that and having and things like gold are really important as well, or just some form of precious metals, because, again, it's another hedge against things going pear-shaped I quite like to have some something in there as well so just very general speaking and also the thing that I'm quite excited about at the moment that I've really been getting into is AI bots which are literally what you what it sounds like so everyone's really into chat GPT it does all the loads of copywriting which is fantastic but it's hard to actually make make that make money so to speak there's lots of sort of steps along the way that actually turns into monetization whereas there are actually ai bots that actually trade for you on your behalf on the uh, money markets or trading gold depending on what it usually they have ones that are programmed to do any particular ones and literally it's like you don't, you don't actually have to know how to how to trade at all it's just working in the background trading in and out on your behalf on your in your platform it's not you, some of them will have to go on their platform but quite often it's on your your own platform and your own account and um yeah I'm quite excited about that because it's it's another it's a, again it's another thing to invest in and it gives really good returns as well do we have any questions anyone going around the room what questions do we have with this step Deanna when something new comes out, how do you look at it through your eyes to ask the right questions of, is this a scam or is this legit? Oh, yeah, that's a really good question. Yeah. I don't know. You develop a sense about it. You definitely develop a sense. Um, there was, I was in a group and they, there was this, the, the leader of the group was recommending this particular thing. And there was just something about it that didn't, it just didn't sit well with me. And I just, and I just stayed, all the others were getting into it and I just didn't, and what was it? Um, sometimes when something is too good to be true, I think that's, that's a definite alarm bell. You need to investigate further. <laughs> sometimes I don't like the ones that tend to be the multi-level ones because they, they don't tend to be quite, so real somehow I don't know why 
it's hard it's it's actually hard to to put into words actually it's 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 just a, a sense and and if you if if it goes through a few of those things and you're still okay with it then I guess what I do is I just invest a little bit in it just to see what happens because you know trying it out because sometimes I've tried you know I've on behalf of my clients now I'm trying out different bots to see and some of them look amazing to start with and then suddenly they're terrible you know so if you put a lot into it I mean the good thing actually on some of these platforms is that you can open demo accounts so you're actually not trading real money you're trading pretend money which means that you can actually try these things out without actually risking anything so there was one particular one that was looking amazing for a a couple of weeks or no a few, like for a few days it was like incredible and then all of a sudden it was just it, it, it just nosedived you know so so you know if you'd invested with real money then that would have been quite catastrophic but then as I said if you didn't try it out with a small amount that can give you some form of clue as to what what kind of performance it gives but yeah I think sometimes you just get a sense of of, of what works and what don't and I don't know. I mean, certainly if you want to talk to me about it, because as I said, I've I've seen a lot of scams as well. So I've I get a I've got a picture as to what kinds of things people are doing to scam people. So I guess that's something that if you wanted to run something over me, I can, you know, just give you my my view on that. And it's also worth studying. I know there are channels, podcasts, YouTube channels and things like this. Um that also give information regarding scams. I think uh, CoffeeZilla on YouTube is one of them. Um, I'm not sure. I don't necessarily um, go to his channel and I can't really vouch for it, to be honest. Um, but channels like that, I have, like, like I said, I haven't delved deep into his channel, but there are channels like that that not only expose scams, but also tell you what to be mindful of um, and what to look out for um so it's also that's also really important um to to look out for because as we invest in things it is true sometimes things can seem too good to be true sometimes you can have questions for going like how is this actually happening and you know all those different things um so there you know we want to come from an energy of possibility but also do everything in within our power um to make sure that we're 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 smart we're protected we're you know doing things in the right way um so there's some good there's some good tips there, Heather. Hand, do you have your your hand raised there? I was just just uh, on the scamming. It took me 16 years to find a financial advisor that I now just direct and tell them don't call me unless the world is ending and I don't want to know then either. So don't call me at all. Just keep the money going. Keep my capital intact. When I started many years ago with a startup company, I'm a scientist, so. I have absolutely no, no um, history at all in, in investing, but um, it was a time when the stock market was really doing it quite, quite well. And as an amateur, I started to invest in single stocks. And I guess if I had had my financial advisor at that time, I wouldn't have lost. I mean, I didn't, you only lose when you sell the stock. Um, but um, I think my advice is find somebody trusted like Heather to do it for you and get on with your with your business in life, um, because I'm unless you really 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 love investing, and that's your business, then that's fine. But if if your mind is elsewhere and your passion is elsewhere, find that trusted expert. It might take some time, and then you will be most likely protected from the so called scammers. You may not have the the huge returns that that uh, um, that the, that the Mr. Melmots or the or the Madoffs will promise you a wonderful, wonderful film. Is uh, I think Anthony Trollope's "The Way We Live Now" is <laughs> really, really funny about a particular scam like the Madoff scam that happened to us a few years ago. But that would be my my suggestion. Beautiful, thanks, Hans. Yeah, I guess we also, in terms of clarity, Heather, do we need to know? how involved we want to be and also how risk averse we are. Is that something you would recommend? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I guess if you're risk averse, you don't have to go lower 
higher than the lowest rung. So this kind of kind of investing in baskets idea, you know, you don't have to ever go higher than that. You can just stay at that level and it can give you quite a good return. And, you know, you don't have to look at it very often. You don't have to because it's just it's just ticking a lot along in the background. So I guess, you know, if you're more inclined to want to get into it, learn a, a bit more about it, you know, if you suddenly find that you enjoy it, then you can obviously go more into it and learn and 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 do more, you know, involved things, but you don't have to, you can just stay stay doing those general things. So yeah, it, it literally depends on where, where each person wants to go. Okay, beautiful. Hey, show of hands around the room, who here is uh actively investing in something whether it is index funds or real estate or uh crypto or anything anything that your money is going towards something you want to build show of hands who's who is actively doing that a few people cool okay nice um how, how do you mean investing you mean personally investing or having some agent investing for you yeah either or that's a good question you know um, yeah. i didn't necessarily know where i was going to go with the question but just understand like you know, are we underway? Are we are we doing something? Are we doing something about this already that we can build on, or is it starting from, you know, starting from ground? But that is a that is a good question. I know here in Australia, people, you know, through even just working, will go through and, and you, you, the business will do it for you. You know, so that you have something towards retirement and you and you have a super fund. Um, but I know in in the US and many other places, it's different. So um, I think especially in the US, isn't it pretty, it's pretty important to take your, your assets into your own, into your own hands and to, and to learn more about it. And, um, you know, I think if you do start with just index funds, like Heather's saying, and creating a, you know, starting with a basket, relatively, you know, more safe than speculating, um, the returns aren't going to be, you know, drastic and hundred percent increase overnight, but it's, it's going to allow you to get into a, a a an investor mindset isn't it um to just learn and how to invest and how to start investing in fund in index funds and just to get the ball rolling um so do we, does anyone have any questions on how to how to start how to invest do we know where to do it how to do it is everyone, is everyone familiar with how to do it maybe heather we can start there we have a few more minutes left but do you have practical steps on where people can go and how to start actually doing this um practical steps i mean that is one of the things that i definitely take people through in terms of you know because i think that sometimes whenever there's a barrier whenever there's something that's sort of like it trips people up or they don't know how to get through it then that can be just an excuse to just kind of just go okay i don't know why I'm, i know how to get past this stage so i'm just gonna not do it so I try and help people along all the stages. And so, yeah, one of the things that we do is just to go through and have a look. There are lots of free free platforms where you can actually, you know, look at, you know, actually see where to invest, you know, see where the what's going up, you know, so you can kind of get a, a real sense of where to actually invest what the trends are because you, you just want to go with the trend so the idea is that you know you're just looking for the growth you're looking for the trends i'll just say goodbye to my son um, and you're you're going upstream you know you're just following the stream you know there's no point of being clever about this you know there's no point of say oh well everyone's going that way so i'm going to go that way no <laughs> there's no originality in this one it's like you just want to follow the the stream and make life easy for yourself you know you want to find the fastest growing streams you want to just get your boat in those ones just go go off and 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 go from there but 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 then just knowing how to go into those streams and so knowing what platforms to 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 open you know how to actually make a trade how to actually you know what to what buttons to press what not to press I mean they tend to make it easy these days I mean as I said it's amazing that we have these things on our desktops that literally can just make you into you know an investor you can do absolutely anything on these um, computers you know and literally you can do the same as someone on Wall Street so just being able to just you know knowing which button to press which is not that hard but you know just once you know how to do it you just can can trade away and it's it's all good beautiful all good at, and being and, and just being mindful just being you know just 
as I said, making sure that you're doing it safely by making sure that you look at things holistically, making sure you diversify, making sure you protect yourself along the way, which is so key. Makes sense, everyone. I would, so follow follow Heather's suggestion and just learn learn where to do this. Learn, you can even do a quick Google search, which apps in, in my country allow me to do to invest for free or invest, you know, in, in the best way, which were, what are the best platforms and just start um, finding creative ways to get clarity, creative ways to get, um, you know, that surplus to invest at the end of the month and um, be in, just really start focusing on what you can build and get excited about it. And then just, and then take those small action steps, reach out to Heather if you've got questions. And if you have, um, if you need any extra guidance, Heather's in the serving circle and, Obviously, you all have her links and everything like that. If not, I'll provide them for you. Um, but thank you so much, Heather. I think she needs a round of applause for being here. Just and one, last, and one last point. I just want to just emphasize that it is fun. You know, I think I might have said it before, but you know, it, it, it is fun. And I just look at investing a bit like people look at their football teams. You know, I just find it exciting. So just wanted to leave on that note. There you go. Awesome. Everyone, I'll put the link to the uh, collaborative call that's on in five minutes. I'll put that in the chat if you guys want to jump on and uh, see you there. But besides uh, the collaborative call, I think these these coaching calls um, are going really well and giving you guys a lot of value, you know, helping highlight some more and more people in the serving circle like Heather and other people who have expertise and skills. So let me know if you want to jump on and add something as a uh, as a call or as a as a coach, as an expert, if you can give some value to the community. I think that would be, um, you know, a really good energy exchange. That's a win-win-win for everyone. So if you guys have any questions, any queries, any anything at all you want to run by me, just shoot me a message on Facebook. Um, but this has got my brain thinking. I'm going to up my level of, uh, of investing as well. I've been talking to Heather quite a bit. Um, hopefully you guys can take the action and get some practicalities from this. Be excited about it. Build towards your future. And um, just allow that to be part of your, you know, a percentage of your life that, you know, you're consistently growing and learning about. So thanks everyone for being here. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. If you can jump on the collaborative call. Thank you again, Heather. And uh, I'll see you soon, everyone. Thanks so much. Take care.